All right, everyone. So we've done videos on the ZX9R here and on my ZZR 1400 with the wifey and given her her first taste of what these motorcycles feel like to ride. Now, she hasn't passed her motorcycle test yet. She's on a CBT, so she is a learner rider. And some of you have left in the comments concerns regarding uh, why I'm allowing her to ride motorcycles like these, considering that she hasn't done her test yet. And in today's video, well, we're going to discuss the value of a four motorcycle license in relation to someone's ability to ride big motorcycles like this. So let's jump on and let's go. All right, everyone. Yeah, I think for the most part, people understand that just because you pass your motorcycle test, it doesn't automatically make you an amazing rider. And it doesn't necessarily change the fact that, well, this is now your opportunity to get on a big motorcycle. So I, I, I don't quite understand those comments where they say like, oh, you haven't passed your test yet, so what are you doing letting her ride a bike like that? And it's like, mate, it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> it's up to me if I trust my wife enough, if I trust her ability enough to ride my bikes, you know? It's got nothing to do with her passing her test or not, all right? It's just, again, like anyone, from my perspective, anyone has the ability to ride a big motorcycle, and if they really wanted to, they can ride a big motorcycle as their first one, as we get in the United States, you know? There are countries all around the world where you don't have to pass a test to start riding big motorcycles. You know what I mean? You can learn to ride on a big motorcycle, and so it's like, you know, whatever. It's just, it's just a, a British thing or a European thing. So, yeah. All right, it's, it, that's totally false. Just because you pass your motorcycle test doesn't automatically make you this expert motorcyclist that gives you automatic abilities to ride big motorcycles. It absolutely does not, all right? It takes time, experience, and everyone's first time on a big motorcycle is everyone's first time on a big motorcycle, regardless of what qualifications you have, okay? My wife, from my perspective, has had enough experience on her motorcycle to at least try out bikes like the ZX9 and my ZZR 1400. And in the near future, it will be the ZH2 as well. She will have a go on the ZH2. And we haven't taken her out like on the road or anything like that. It's just in a, a, a controlled area. It's just in a, in a small area where she gets an opportunity to ride the bike, to feel it in between her legs, and kind of get an idea of what it's like to ride big motorcycles. Because I do have an ulterior motive here to encourage her to do a test, to make her realize that, wow, these bikes are actually a hell of a lot of fun. I want one. And of course, if it encourages her to do a test, well, then that's what I'm gonna do. Anything in my power to encourage her to do a test, I'm gonna do. And I, don't, I really don't see any harm in giving someone a little bit of a chance on a bigger motorcycle. And remember, the ZX9 was the first one that we did that little experiment on. And yeah, okay, she was really, she was, she was a bit nervous. She was a bit scared, but to be fair to her, once she got going, she did really well. And from that experience, I thought to myself, okay, well, that's good. Now we can get her onto the ZZR 1400, give her a go on that and see how she feels on that. And you have no idea that the difference in confidence that she had between this motorcycle and the ZZR 1400. Even though the ZZR is a bigger motorcycle, significantly bigger, way more horsepower, way more torque than this, and much heavier. And she aced it, she absolutely aced it. She had no problem with that bike whatsoever, all right? And so it's like, look, okay, fine. You, I'm taking a chance on someone that's never had experience before on a big motorcycle, but we did it in the right way. We did it on a motorcycle first that I wasn't as concerned about if she dropped it. And then we did it on a bike that was more valuable and would be a concern if she dropped it. And she dropped neither, all right? Despite the fact that riding these motorcycles, these heavier bikes at slower speeds arguably is even harder than riding them at road speeds, even harder than riding them at everyday normal speeds. So it's yeah, just a bit annoying really when some people will, will make comments like that 
because it really damages people's confidence. You know? It's like, who cares? Who cares about qualifications and things like that? For me, experience counts for a hell of a lot more than qualifications. I'd feel so much more comfortable if someone had a little bit of experience riding a 125, then getting on a big motorcycle like this. I'd feel way more confident about them doing that than having no experience whatsoever and then getting on a motorcycle like this, or even a motorcycle half this size. You know, it's, it's just common sense, all right? Come on, you bigots. <laughs> those of you that, that made those comments, honestly, it's just totally just unnecessary. And you know how silly that logic is. It's like, oh, okay, so you pass an exam in mathematics or something, and all of a sudden it makes you a maths expert. No, it bloody doesn't. Come on, get a grip. Seriously. <laughs> Oh yeah, you do. You do your your, your degree in uh, in physics. So it's like yeah, you're automatically like this this brilliant, amazing physicist. It's like no, you're not. No, you're not. Even doctors, right? They go through a lot of training and a lot of. They, they have to dictate. Uh, oh, excuse me. They have to dedicate a lot of time to becoming a doctor. But their first time performing surgery is still their first time performing surgery it doesn't matter how many qualifications they have or how much training they've done it's a totally different experience when you actually get in there and actually do a surgical procedure and I have no doubt as well that even doctors before they actually end up becoming doctors they will go through that experience in a surgical operating theater kind of shadowing uh, uh, an actual doctor with experience it's the same same old thing, you can make so many parallels, so many comparisons. All right. Woo! <laughs> it all comes down to trust. You know, I trust my wife to look after my things. If I, if I give her, if I let her have a go playing with, with my toys, well, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's all the innuendos coming in now. Right, but if I trust her to have a go on my bike, then what is the big deal, all right? Who are you lot to tell me whether or not I'm allowed to let my wife have a go on my bikes, okay? It's just, nah, whatever. And the proof is in the pudding, she did absolutely fine. So screw you lot. <laughs> and that's the thing, I would actually, uh, if you have an opportunity to have a go on a, a bigger motorcycle, even if it's just to figure out if it's for you, you know, if you want to spend that money, if you want to commit 100% to actually getting involved in bigger bikes, is it worth it to you? Well, the best way to figure that out is to actually get that experience on a motorcycle to begin with, right? So you might be like, okay, I do my CBT and it's on a 125 and I got to ride my 125, blah, blah, blah. Well, getting your CBT isn't that expensive. It's like 200 quid, I think, in most places or most parts of the UK. To become a learner rider, to actually start riding a 125cc bike on the road doesn't cost a lot. But it could cost up to a thousand pounds to get your full license on a big motorcycle. So it's like, well, you get that opportunity then to have a go on a big motorcycle to make sure that it's actually something that you want to do. You know? It's that the benefits outweigh the cons in a lot of ways, especially if it's a motorcycle that someone is like, yeah, if you drop it, it's fine, don't worry about it, just just take it easy, be careful, don't be stupid on it, you know, and as long as you trust the person that's having a go on it, then you won't have any problems, right, or you shouldn't have any problems, but it's quite funny, because a few of you were like, oh, I would never trust my wife to have a go on my Tesla 1400, and it's like, yeah, okay, that's fine, but that's your wife, you know, mine, uh, yeah, I, I, I believe in my wife doing these things, you know, I, I have faith in her doing these things. I wouldn't have let her do it if I didn't think she could do it, if I thought she was going to drop it as soon as she got on it, you know? So I, I kind of already knew that she was going to ace it beforehand, otherwise I wouldn't have shot the video. But if she did drop the bike, or if she did drop the ZX9R, then it's good content, isn't it? You know? So <laughs> for me, the benefits really do outweigh the cons when it comes to that stuff but yeah it's just funny it's just absolutely hilarious how i knew that these comments were going to come in and uh and it's just <laughs> it's just a load of rubbish 
honestly, just I I illogical nonsense. People thinking that, oh yeah, you, you pass your test and all of a sudden that automatically qualifies you to ride bikes like these. Uh, arguably it doesn't, you know? My wife's had three, nearly four years experience riding her Ninja 125. There are people out there that can do direct access courses where they do their CBT, and their full license all in one go all over the space of a couple of weekends and you really think that they are more qualified to ride a motorcycle like this over my over someone than over someone like my wife who actually has a lot of experience riding bikes ah get out of it <laughs> total load of nonsense but anyway everyone i mean i thought it was quite a funny video to to shoot and I knew I knew this was coming so I was like right I'll get I'll get my stuff ready to shoot this video because I knew I knew it was gonna happen and we're gonna get more comments in future as well about the ZH2 I have no doubt of a similar kind of nature but remember that we should be encouraging people like my wife who have this anxiety about motorcycles to begin with who are scared of bikes in a lot of ways they're scared of the big bikes and you know, I felt like it was up to me, it was my responsibility to teach her, to show her how not scary these bikes are. You know, even people who have got on something like a, a 600cc sport bike or something like that, and they think that is it, that is my limit, I'm not going to go any further than that. Anything else over that is too big. Well, if my wife can get on a bike like that for the first time and be like, actually, this is really usable and really comfortable, really enjoyable. Then any of you lot who are too afraid of getting on bikes like Fireblaze or ZX-10Rs or what have you, or, or anything bigger than that, don't be so worried about it. Just go on a test ride or go on a demo day as well. A lot of these manufacturers do demo days every year. Have a look at some in your local area or close by and just give it a go. And you'll be like, actually, you know what? This is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Trust me, that's that your your thoughts will totally change. Woohoo! <laughs> Ultra fun. Anyway, everyone, thank you ever so much for watching this video. I think that camera has died on me. So uh, I think we're gonna have to call it here for today. Thank you ever so much for joining me on today's ride. It's been an absolutely lovely day to come out and ride despite the fact that we've got scattered showers everywhere in every which way direction i'm glad that i've been able to find a nice little dry patch today to come out and ride so yeah thank you ever so much for joining me today leave that like hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any more of this amazing content going forward and we will catch you all in the next video have a good one take care everyone ride safe